Hey, you're watching Vinyl for Miles, your best resource for music, audio gear, and vinyl reviews. Today, we're gonna to be talking about anti-skating settings, how to calibrate it, how to set it, and why it's important. Stick around. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I'm Michael, this is Vinyl for Miles. Today we're gonna to be talking about anti-skating settings. When you get yourself a brand new turntable, you're gonna have a full setup guide, and if it's a quality turntable, typically you're gonna have something called tracking force recommended to you. Tracking force, you may ask yourself, what is that? That's the amount of force that is applied to a record from your tone arm. You'll notice that most turntables have a little tone arm weight in the back, and they will have an anti-skating setting somewhere on the turntable that you can adjust. If you're using an Audio Technica, Techniques, or other types of DJ style turntables, you should have a dial to adjust your anti-skating settings. If you have a Project Debut Carbon or a few other project models, you'll have the little fishing line with a weight on it and there's little notches that you can adjust it forward and backward to add resistance or remove resistance. Today I'm going to be showing you how to adjust it with the type of turntable that has a dial. But the same concept applies to whatever turntable you have. Unless you have an automatic turntable or a lower grade turntable that has no anti-skating adjustments on it, you can still measure your anti-skating settings using a calibration disc or a CD to see if it's in or out of spec. So let's go over the different ways to calibrate it. First thing you're gonna need is your box or the instructions from your turntable that have all the manufacturer's specifications in it. Once you have your instructions, look for something called tracking force, which I just mentioned what that is. So I have the 2M red. I'm looking at the tracking force here. It is asking for 1.8 grams of tracking force. You wanna take whatever the weight that they give you on here, so 1.8 grams, you set that for your tone arm weight, and typically you reflect that on your anti-skating settings. So my anti-skating settings, they're set to 1.8 and my weight set to 1.8, so in theory, it should balance right in the middle of a disc and it shouldn't flutter or go any other direction. It should stick right in the middle. Unfortunately, I've discovered these manufacturer specifications aren't always correct given your situation. So not all turntables are the same, not all setups are the same. So what I'm gonna show you how to do is actually calibrate your anti-skating settings. There's a few ways you can do this. You can use a CD, which is free, and you basically put this on the turntable, you drop down the tone arm, and hopefully it sticks right in the middle and doesn't go towards the center or the right hand side of the disc. You can adjust this by adding weight or removing weight from the anti-skating setting on your turntable. The only problem with this is surface area. If you were to take a record and hold the CD directly up to the record, if you were to drop this on the CD, it's really not gonna give you much benefit because this is all non-playable surface area. The very edge of your record usually has a loop to put your stylus in there so it doesn't hit the label, just infinitely plays in the center. So it's okay if you have a little bit of inward tracking force on that loop because it's really not going anywhere. Where you wanna measure is right here. Given that's not possible with a CD, there's something I wanna show you. This is called the anti-skating calibration disc. This is made by Turntable Revival. Looks like a record. You could store it in your record storage area. Comes in a sleeve. However, when you pull it out, it is completely clear. I think this is either plexiglass or some kind of plastic. Uh, but this allows your stylus to just float freely on a larger surface area. This is about a 12 inch disc. If you were to measure from the center to the outside, that's about six inches. So you want to go about three and a half to three inches in. That's where you want to calibrate your anti-skating settings. So I'm going to show you both ways with the CD and with the anti-calibration disc to kind of illustrate why it's important that you should be measuring where a playable surface area is. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at the two different ways you can do this and why it's better to get an anti-skating calibration disc instead of just using the CD method. Let's go. All right, so now we're in front of my turntable. This is the Audio-Technica LP5. You'll see here, this is your tone arm weight. This goes from zero to 3.6 grams, I believe, on my turntable. And then on the right-hand side here, we have our anti-skating adjustments. This goes from zero to three, basically reflects what's on your weight. Order foam 2M Red, they recommend putting 1.8 grams of tracking force. So I have this set to 1.8, and I have my anti-skating settings set to 1.8. If you want to do the CD method, 
which is not the best method, but it's free and it kind of gives you a good idea. Just put your CD on here, right in the middle, and turn the turntable on. You want to be very careful though. Keep your hand on the tone arm lift. Keep it ready because if you go too far in, your stylus can get stuck on the groove of the CD. If it goes too far out, your stylus can hit the platter or whatever kind of mat that you have on here and really damage your stylus. So just be very cautious. So what I'm gonna do is release my lock on my tone arm. I have my tone arm lift all the way up. I'm just gonna put this right in the middle of the CD and go ahead and drop it. And mine's setting right in the middle. So that tells me that the manufacturer's specifications are somewhat right. I'll give you an example of what it should not look like. Oh, see how it floated inward? That is not what you wanna see. But, as I mentioned, the CD is really not going to be your most accurate measuring point. This is literally non-playable surface area. This is where your label is on your, on your record. So let's go ahead and bust out the anti-calibration disc and I'll show you how different it is compared to a CD. Here's my anti-calibration disc. If I set this right on the platter, this gives me 12 inches to work with. And the point that you want to measure is right in the middle of this disc. So typically the first two to three inches of your record here is going to be your label and non-playable surface area. So I'm going to measure right here in the middle. So my tone arm's up, I'm right in the middle, and I'm going to drop it down. I'm at about 1.8 grams. See how it floats in? That is not what you want to see. So why don't we add some anti-skating resistance to this. I'm gonna go ahead and go to like 2.1. Still floating in, but now it's much slower. So now I'm gonna go ahead and go to like 2.5 grams here. Let's go ahead and drop it. So that's what you wanna see here. It's, it's wobbling just a little bit, and that has to do with the disc isn't perfectly flat. But this gives me a great idea that the center of the playable surface here my tone arm is not going too far in, not going too far out. It's staying perfectly balanced right in the middle. That's what you wanna go for. And that's pretty much it. So what are the advantages? If you go into a deep dive into anti-skating and tracking force, it's all about how the needle sits in the groove. If you have too much tracking force, it can cause damage to your stylus and your record adding too much weight to the groove. If you have not enough anti-skating, your stylus is gonna hit the wall of the groove and give you some inner groove distortion. If it's too light and you have too much anti-skating resistance set, you're gonna see your tone arm skip across your record and scratch it up, that's not good. So what you want is an even vertical and even horizontal tracking force to get that stylus to sit directly in the middle of the groove. It should have the best audio quality possible. If you're an audiophile, this is an absolute must. You're guaranteeing you're not gonna have any damage to your records. And overall, it just gives you peace of mind that your turntable setup is pristine and exactly where it needs to be. Shout out to Turntable Revival for sending me this anti-calibration disc. It's only eight bucks guys, so I'm gonna put a link below. Well worth the investment and it's gonna be a hell of a lot more accurate than using a CD. Now remember, if your turntable's automatic or there's no visible anti-skating settings, reach out to the manufacturer and ask them how you can either calibrate it or open up a warranty to have them work on it for you. All right, thanks so much for watching my video. My name is Michael. If you enjoyed the content here, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for future videos. Uh, and until next time, thanks so much for watching. See ya.